who's feeling super friggin Tammy today me hello my trash stars it's me Penny Angela your favorite problematic not problematic super sweet and not so sweet crazy not so crazy unhinged but really not unhinged bimbo so if you look at the title you already know what the hell we're going to talk about we are talking about bitch oops bitch we are going to be okay honestly like don't ignore my vanity area like ignore that today we are going to be talking about bimbo television shows that you may or may not friggin know because it's what the culture needs i have compiled a list of some of my favorite like bimbo shows from the early 2000s mid 2000s whatever that i really feel that you need to watch if you want to have some like back history of like the trashy bimbo lifestyle if you love like pammy vibes if you love rock and roll being a groupie motorhead bobby brown tara patrick jenna jameson carmen electra like all of those type of people sasha gray you need to watch this video because we're, we're, i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm, I'm literally about to supply you your new obsession. I am about to supply you your new obsession that's going to kickstart your bimbo career. So before we get into it, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yes, you want to be a part of the Trash Star family. We're Trashy meets Superstar and Corn Star and trap star and we are the trash star so you want to join the trash star family so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification the youtube algorithm really likes comments so if you want to help out a, a bimbo leave a comment and yeah let's get into it you already know it's going to be a good day because my boobs look good today so like that's kind of like how i can predict like my day so the first bimbo television show that i feel that you guys should be watching is pretty well known especially because of tiktok is girls next door the girls next door starred of course holly madison bridget and kendra so holly was uh basically hugh hefner's like main girlfriend at the time Bridget was like the sporty tomboy. She was the youngest one. And then we had Bridget who was like the super sweet, basically like Elle Woods of the show. She was in college and she was studying media. And I really feel connected to Bridget because that was my um, major in college, like media studies, communications, journalism. And look at me now, I am on YouTube wearing a blonde wig. So The Girls Next Door was on <laughs> E! Um, from around 2005 to, uh, to, I believe, 2010. And it basically chronicled, you know, the Playboy Bunnies living with Hugh Hefner in the Playboy Mansion. Mind you, during this time, it was like super popular to be like blonde and pink and cute and bubbly. And that's what the culture loved. And, I, and that's something I also love about like the 2000s that it was so pro girl like everything was like pink and like girls like ruled everything and the more we go down this list of television shows it's like of course you would be inspired like if you were watching like all these fun shows of like just being a girl and shopping and like I don't know of course there were like some problematic things at that time like you know <laughs> bitch you know like the body stuff and the beauty standards and you know the tabloid the evil tabloid magazines but i try to ignore that <laughs> and i just try to like think of like the good stuff of that time so my favorite uh bunny at the time when the show was out was kendra i love that she was so trailer park she was so ratchet area of gentlemen's clubs <laughs> Let's go. Uh, well, unfortunately, you're not allowed. Why? Uh, because you're a woman. But well, where are the strippers at? Well, it's a different understanding to what you understand, <laughs> gentlemen's clubs. It's um, it's you. That's what I was thinking. No. Oh, well, who no cares then about that? <laughs> That's so like she was so different from the other girls, and I'm not like other girls. But, like now looking back, I'm like, hmm, I don't know. But when the show was out. 
Kendra was my favorite, then Bridget, then Holly. But now as time has gone and you know, I know what I know and everyone has grown up, uh, Holly is of course my favorite and Bridget. Um, if you see Kendra's Instagram, she's completely different from um, the the girl we knew. But of course, that was she was like 21 when the show came out, so we can't really expect her to stay the same. Well, we kind of could for some people. It wasn't a phase. Holly is still blonde and of that bimbo lifestyle. Bimbo is a lifestyle. And same for um, Bridget. You know, she's still like into spooky stuff and she always loved Halloween and spooky stuff. So I kind of feel like for those two, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a phase, but I feel like for Kendra, like that whole like vibe probably was just like, she was wild, young, living in a Playboy Mansion. Um, another thing I like about the show is that you get to see some classic Playboy Playmates. I believe Barbie Benton, right? Barbie Benton. Um, she would be on the show. Um, you would see her and then like, it was kind of interesting because like sometimes like Holly would get a little bit of jealous because you know, she was also one of Hugh's girlfriends during the time and they traveled, you know, the world together and all that fun stuff. Tony, Barbie fucking Benton. Hi Norma. It's good to see you. The last time Barbie was here for a fight night, it was a little bit awkward because Barbie at one time was Hef's number one girlfriend and now Holly's the number one girlfriend and it just felt kind of strange. She's coming with us tonight? She is coming with us tonight? Is she coming to limo with us? What? And it, it, you get to see like a bunch of other like um, Playboy playmates in the show. It's a great show to watch um, if you're beginning like your bimbo journey, if you just like want to see like mainstream bimbo vibes and also you get to see three different types of like bimbo personalities the brainiac legally blonde type girl like very bubbly i just loved bridget because i'm the same way there was one episode where she spoke about how much she loves to give gifts and i'm the same way like if it's someone's birthday like i want to go all out like i want to plan everything and like i don't know like i love giving gifts um so yeah, you have like the Bridget, like Legally Blonde type vibe, but then you have like, you know, the sporty bimbo, the little like trailer trash, cause like Kendra, and you know, you, you see the chronicles of her and her family like a little bit on the show. And then we also have Holly, who was just like, I guess like at, during that time of the show, she was just like the main sugar baby type bimbo vibe. So of course, Girl Sex Store is on the list. Um, I believe, don't quote me, that you can watch it on Tubi and maybe Peacock. I'm not sure. I think it's on TV. I don't know. And maybe some episodes on YouTube. I don't know. So the next bimbo television show that I feel you guys need to watch, if the girls next door was a little bit too like blonde and bubbly for you, the next show is for the complete opposite of that. Bad Girls Club, love me or hate me, it's just an obsession, love me or hate me, la 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 la, blah 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 blah, blah. ooh ooh, la 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 la, f you, like that song, the theme song, I love Bad Girls Club, I ain't got no sleep cause of y'all, y'all not gonna get no sleep cause of me, wake the fuck up, yes, Tanisha, get the f get up, get up, I'll buy it back. What better revenge than to wake them up while they're drooling in their beds with a nice old big hearty marching band? I'm not done. You think I'm done? It's not over till a fat lady sings. Let me hear you say, Wop, 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 wop. I didn't get no sleep because of y'all. Y'all not gonna get no sleep because of me. Wop, 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 wop. I had to get that out of my fucking system, bitch. So the Bad Girls Club, seven girls living in this big ass mansion. It was like, you know, all different cities. Um, I believe, yeah, all different cities. But I think mostly it was in LA. I, it's been a long time since I watched the show. But Bad Girls Club is these girls, they would drink, they would fight, they would, you know, hook up, they would just like go crazy. But also they had assignments that they had to do to stay in the house and there were rules they had to follow including no fighting and if you're a bad girl rules of no fighting bitch well 
that didn't work out all the time because these bitches like to fucking fight. <laughs> I remember like sometimes like just staying home and be like yeah mom I'm sick like to watch like bad girls club reruns on oxygen bitch like I did not give a f like I love that show and like I was not a bad girl <laughs> I'm not a bad girl I don't think um but like I want it to be like I was like I wish I could be one of those bitches that be like I wish I could be one of those bitches that were like out here fighting people like mm, yeah I wish I could do that. <laughs> but not really like I would not want to do that but yeah so these seven women on the show they were always mostly like pro-sex really ratchet and crazy I forget how many seasons the bad girls club has had but some breakout stars of the show is Miss Natalie Nunn from season four the Hollywood level, the nice things, guys to fly me out, guys to buy me stuff. So if you can't do any of those things for me, I don't, don't even waste my time. Miss, I run LA. I run LA. I run LA. If you know, you know. <laughs> I run LA. I run LA. I run LA. What? Then, of course, we have Tanisha from season two. Like, who didn't freaking love Tanisha? Brooklyn bitch like we all love Tanisha like of course you fucking did bitch like we all fucking did don't play yourself like we all love Tanisha the pans like she was just so like iconic mm. and you may or may not know this but the Claremont twins the famous Instagram models and entrepreneurs who are like killing the game right now they were on Bad Girls Club season 14. If you look up bad bitch in the dictionary, you'll find the Claremont. Yeah. You'll find me and two Shannon. bad bitches. Right. <laughs> and then there was also this other girl on the show, Bad Girl Blondie, who was always like, done, done, done. And me and my friend at the time, we would always be like, if we were mad at something, we would be like, Bad Girl Blondie, done. Like, I don't know. But like, yeah. Love the show. Complete opposite of a girl's next door because, like, you know, Hugh Hefner, he was pretty strict but these girls were not strict like they didn't have a curfew they were like doing their their shit like they didn't give a fuck bitch honestly so love bad girls club honestly i feel like the culture needs bad girls club to come back like i really do but like i don't want to see it with instagram baddies like i feel like rea reality shows now like natalie nunn she started this bad boys show on zeus network and i haven't watched it but i heard mixed reviews and a lot of people are saying there was some controversy with the show. There's my cat. Where is she? No, I'm covering you. Okay, whatever. There was some controversy with the show because Natalie Nunn had um, casting calls, allegedly, I believe. And, um, you know, everyone that did get cast for the show were already known people like Milan Christopher and... Um, Jonathan, the famous hairstylist, and these people were already established people, so they didn't cast unknowns. And I feel like reality television now is really into casting people that are kind of known from the internet. But I miss the days where it was complete regular people, put them on TV and let them become superstars. And like, like Snooki, like from Jersey Shore, like if Jersey Shore happened now and you're just casting like famous like italian american influencers it wouldn't be the same to me like you have to like go find right re regular civilians normal people with normal jobs put them on tv well, let's make some stars out of people let me make you a star baby it's hollywood like come on so the next show on my bimbo television list that you need to watch is a mixture of both <laughs> girls next door and bad girls club and it's rock love hey 
let me introduce myself. I'm gonna get you off like there's no one else. Hey, let me be your rocker love. I, 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 I fucking bitch, I probably fucking butchered, butchered the fucking lyrics, bitch, but whatever. Now, out of all these shows, like, if I could be on any show, it would be this one. Out of my whole list, it would be Rock of Friggin' Love, Rock of Love, bitch. Like, this show made me who I am. <laughs> So Rock of Love is about 80s hair metal, glam metal star, Brett Michaels from the band Poison looking for love. And I guess he was looking for love in all the wrong places and I guess bitch he kept looking for love in all the wrong places cause you know, he was still single after the show most, most parts, right? Like yeah. Hmm. So the premise of this show is that you have a group of women competing for the love of Brett Michaels and seeing who can say to rock his world. Next girl I noticed, her name was Brandy M, but I will call her Wild Thing. When I saw this girl, I just thought completely hot, nasty rock and roll sex. I thought, what's that going on? The show lasted between 2007 and 2009, and some of the breakthrough stars is from season one, Heather, love her, hate her, Heather. She is iconic. She was so like trailer trash and iconic. Sorry, I got a text message from my boss. Bitch, don't fucking text me when I'm off, bitch. There's no office hours when I'm off, bitch. I don't answer work emails when I'm fucking off, bitch. Don't fucking do that, bitch. Anyway, as I was saying, we have Heather Shadwell. She was, um, yeah, crazy and, 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 and wild. And she was a stripper and, like, big boobs. And, like, that was pretty much, like, the premise of the show. Like, that shows, like, why I want a boob job, like, my boobs are like kind of big, but you know, they're natural. I want like, I want hooters. <laughs> I want like, call it trashy. Some, some bitches be like, oh my God, like uh, big boobs ruin stuff. Like take out your implants. I'm like, not everyone wants to be a fucking boring bitch. Okay. Not everyone, not everyone like wants to do like that fake bougie vibe that's going on. Like it's so cringe to me. Like you can be rich and still be trashy. Like who cares? Like. Lana Del Rey is rich as fuck. She drives a Toyota. She she hangs out in the country. Like, who cares? Like, just do you. Like, do you and worry about your fucking self. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Season one also had the really controversial Lacey. I was not a fan of Lacey on the show. I'm not a big fan of Lacey. But if you do want to know what Lacey is up to now, she does have her own, like, app streaming service, I believe, called Storm TV. And she has podcasts um, keeping up with, like, the of love stars not only from rock of love but from like flavor of love and that glory day of vh1 television shows that i feel everyone should watch if they didn't grow up watching it then like after you finish watching this video you need to go and type in vh1 reality shows and watch every single one even celebrity rehab okay like <laughs> even celebrity rehab you need to watch Rock of Love, Flavor of Love, Chant at Love, Charm School, every single one. You'll learn something. Like in this video, we're all about education over here, bitch. I like I like I like to I like to teach. I like to teach. Spoiler alert! And the winner of that season was Jess. I found Jess to be boring and uh yeah, obviously, yeah, that didn't work out. Then he came out with season two, and season two of Rock of Love is so iconic. Had my girl, Daisy De La Hoya. We, Daisy is like, she's who we all want to be. She is like, honestly, like one of the blueprints. Like we, and by we, I mean like trashy bimbos, like rock and love, rock and love, rock and roll groupie bimbos. Like we all love Daisy and um, she's a freaking icon, bitch. Okay, like we fucking love Daisy and she was the blueprint like what girl didn't want to be daisy growing up like watching rock of love too like who didn't love daisy she was so cute she still is really cute oops and i forgot to talk about season one also had rodeo also uh you know uh people's crowd favorite but yeah rock of love is where you get all your rock and roll if you want to be like a rock and roll bimbo you kind of gotta watch rock of love and then we can segue into rock of love bus now rock of love bus i feel is probably like the most I know I said season two, but I feel like season two because of Daisy, but Rock of Love Bus is like, 
I feel like the most iconic season and it's the one that is referenced the most from Gen Z on TikTok and just like the cultural impact that Rock of Love Bus has had on the culture. So Rock of Love Bus basically is the girls gonna see if they can handle a rock star life <laughs> and see if they can like handle being on the road with a rock star. You wanna be a rock star girlfriend, you gotta do some rock star shit. And boy, did they fucking do rock star shit. So you cannot talk about Rock of Love Bus without talking about the breakout stars of the show, Ashley fucking A-bomb and Farrah, bitch, the blondtourage. And of course, Gia at the time was in the blondtourage, but she didn't last that long. So Farrah and A-bomb, bitch. Like, <laughs> I love the way Ashley would say bitch, like, bitch, like, it's iconic. But those girls, they made that season. Like I, you will get so much fashion inspiration and just like vibe and aesthetic inspiration, just like studying and referencing like Ashley and Farrah, like so iconic. And it wasn't a phase for them. It wasn't just for the cameras because I follow both of them on social media. And they're still some badass boss bitches. They have their own brand and company called Blantourage Beauty. They sell lashes and lip gloss and lipsticks and, you know, sunglasses and a bunch of shit. So definitely check them out. Fucking love supporting badass bitches. And they are former spicy dancers. We love our strippers on this channel, bitch. Rock Love Bus also had the iconic DJ Lady Tribe. Dude, I honestly wish she lasted longer on the show. Cause like, who was doing it like her? Like DJ Lady Tribe is so iconic. And I know she's not really active right now on social media. Not gonna really get into why. I heard she had like some health issues and I you know, I'm just wishing her all the best. But the winner of that season was Taya, Taya. If you don't remember Taya, she was penthouse pet penthouse pet like she had like these kind of wonky eyebrows honestly and she would always talk about how she was a penthouse pet and that's fucking hot like we love penthouse like we love playboy and we also love penthouse like penthouse is like that's hardcore since what 74 bitch like if you know you fuck no next in the bimbo television shows that you need to watch is a spinoff from rock love and that's the one and only days of the de la hoya show Daisy of fucking love. So Daisy Love is pretty much of the same premise as Rock Love. Daisy De La Hoya, um, who was from Rock Love, it didn't work out with Brett, and now she's looking for a dirty rocker boy. You're sexy. You sing. You know music. You play bass. You're tough. You're cool. It's just, it's a win-win, win-win, win-win. Aren't we all looking for dirty rocker boys? To this day, I am still looking for a dirty fucking rocker boy dirty rocker boy dirty rocker boy where are you dirty rocker boy please <laughs> so this show had a lot of hotties um but the main hottie was this guy on the show named Lungdane, and he so fucking hot um funny enough like <laughs> my friends in New York like I would see him like you know like I would see London and I was like oh my god like ooh like sexy uh I would see him in real life and um because he would hang out in the east coast and me and my friends were sneaking into bars when we were young and yeah we would we would see him We'd be like oh my god he's from Daisy Love and you know that's what happened <laughs> 12 pack and sinister were also some breakout stars from that show but the main reason we all were watching Daisy Love is because of Daisy Icon, icon, the way Daisy does her hair, her makeup, her voice, her style, everything about Daisy. If you are like getting into like this like bimbo trashy core, I don't know what to freaking call it, lifestyle, you gotta know about Daisy De La Hoya. And now we're gonna get into more obscure television shows that people are not talking about enough for me. Married to Rock. Why does no one talk about Married to Rock? That show, even though it lasted only one season, it was like everything to me, like everything to me. So basically Married to Rock, it's about four women that have one shared bond. They are married and or dating to 
rock stars. Big, famous, infamous fucking rock stars. The show debuted in 2010 and as I said before it only lasted one season but it starred Josie Stevens who was the breakout star of that show. Like I love Josie Stevens. I, I still follow her on Instagram to this day. She is such a cell icon to me and she's such a kind person and she's so sweet. Like like Josie Stevens is like she is like that girl like she is like one of the bimbo like blueprints to me like for especially for like rock star wives like she would wear her pleasers her cute little like cute outfit super cute super just like blonde and fun and like beautiful she has like these beautiful big eyes and big lips and she's just drop dead gorgeous and she was like such a breakout star of that like on that show and she is married to Steve Stevens um, from Billy Idol and the show also stars Susan McKagan. She is the wife of Duff McKagan um, Guitarist from the iconic band Guns N' Roses and Velvet Revolver. Also stars Eddie Farrell, the wife of Perry Farrell, I believe from Jane's Addiction, the vocalist of Jane's Addiction. And it also stars um, AJ Seeley. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. She is the girlfriend of Billy who is in the band The Cult. So this show basically just debunked the myths of what it's like being married to a rock star. Like who doesn't want to know like what is it being married to like these wild boys like that are now men like being married to like a guitarist from Guns N' Roses like what is your day like? Do you just go to Starbucks and drive your Range Rover and go to fucking like yoga class? Like what is that like dating? Like a huge rock star like imagine being married to Drake you would want to know what that lifestyle is like you want to you want to know like what is it like being married to like let's say even for like rock and roll like imagine being married to Paul McCartney yeah I, I yeah I want to fucking know well, what are you doing and they basically debunked all that shit and showed you like you know what it's like being married to a rock star and these people navigating family lives that show was on e network it only lasted one season and i wish it lasted longer because like being a rock star wife is like if you know me you know like that's kind of like all i want is to be married to like a rock star and be like a rock star wife because i love music and i love rock stars so so to get even more obscure and to stay in that realm of rock star wives, this is a rock star wife television show that was um, on Canadian TV, but it's not the same vibe of as being a current rock star wife. This show is called The Ex-Wives of Rock. The show debuted in 2012, as I said, on Canadian television, and I believe it lasted three seasons. This show basically chronicled like these ex-wives of major rock stars and show them how they're trying to navigate life after being married to major rock stars. And unlike married to rock, these women are no longer married to rock stars. So of course you're like, well, if you were married to, let's say, Robert Plant and now you guys are divorced, what's your life like? Are you still like dating um are you still rich or what are you doing to support yourself like this show showed like the real side of being married to a rock star and i love it this is the story of athena sharice bobby and blue oh! four best friends who all made the same choice we married rock stars with pretty much the same consequences divorced 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 now these ex-wives of rock are out to prove there is life after the party the show chronicles the individual struggle of these um, women and what happens to them when the party's over and the glitz and glamour is done and the, the stage lights are off and you're divorced and you're just trying to navigate life again and try to have a name for yourself outside of being married to a famous rock star. Of course, the breakout star of this show was Bobby Brown. I fucking love Bobby Brown. Um, she is known as the Sherry Pie Girl. She um, was married to the front man of um, the band Warrant. As I said, she's my Cherry Pie. We all know that song and she was the, the beautiful baddie in the video. And she also dated Tommy Lee and they are estranged. From the last time I caught up with her, I don't know like what she's up to now if they, if they talk now, but yeah, she dated Tommy. And what's really messed up, if you want to know some backstory, so back during the 90s, and I even read this in her book, Dirty Rocker Boys, like, 
people she looked a lot like Pamela Anderson and you know I love Pam she looked a lot like Pam and um they would always get compared to each other and then I believe one night like you know Pam had her eyes on him or something and then like he left her basically for Pam and um yeah he just left her and then the next day she knows like they're engaged after dating for not that long and they're fucking getting married and the sex tape and everything and that really like sparked a major depression for her but you know she she speaks about that in her book dirty rocker boys that i definitely recommend i definitely recommend all you guys read that book and if you guys want like bimbo books that i feel you should um read if you like rock and roll bimbo lifestyle such as like myself um i will do a video on that leave it in the comments below the show also stars Therese Neal, who um, was the ex-wife of Motley Crue, frontman Vince Neal, Athena Lee, and her her part of the show, she is Tommy Lee's um, sister. And it's funny because Bobby Brown is in the show and Bobby Brown was dating her brother. Crazy, yeah. But um, so Athena Lee, her story was like so crazy. Like it was kind of trailer trash. I freaking loved every minute of it. Athena was the ex-wife of the Scorpions drummer, James Cote, Kutak, Kotak, I don't know, I don't freaking know, but the way she would say his name on the show was always like, James Kutak, Kotak, like whatever, like, I don't know, like, just remember how she was saying on the show. They were just unhinged, like, the things that he would put her through on the show and, like, her, like, getting her divorce and, like, everything with him and it was pretty wild, like, it was really interesting to see yeah and the show also starred Susan Dixon who is the ex to basis in the band Warrant Jerry Dixon so we have two girls on the show that were uh dating guys in the band Warrant one girl on the show is the sister of Tommy Lee and Tommy Lee is Bobby's ex-boyfriend and um Tommy Lee is in a band called Motley Crue and Motley Crue's lead singer is Vince Neil and Therese Neal is on the show and is his ex-wife and isn't that just so crazy like all these degrees of separation but I love this show and I feel like people don't talk about this show enough probably because it is a Canadian reality television show but I believe there are some episodes on Amazon that you can purchase I think I found some episodes on YouTube or some Canadian website I forgot many years ago when I watched the show but I highly highly recommend it and the last show on my bimbo television shows that you should watch is the most popular one on here probably as popular as the girls next door and that's the simple life the simple life so this show was on television from um between 2003 and 2007 i believe it had five seasons and it starred paris hilton and nicole ritchie you know two iconic socialites that were all over the tabloids during this during that time in media and they are basically the blueprint of influencers basically two wealthy socialites struggle to do everyday tasks like working at a fast food place farming cleaning making dinner and the iconic do they sell wall stuff at walmart what no. is walmart it's like they sell wall stuff no what is it <laughs> Who didn't love Simple Life? Simple Life is iconic. For me, during that time, I was a uh, Nicole Richie girl. I was, like, I I resonated with Nicole Richie, especially during that show, because, you know, she was beautiful. She still is beautiful. But, you know, I like that she looked similar to me. And back in, you know, the, those times, you didn't really see people like that. So she was curvy, she was plus size. Granted, I wasn't an adult when the show came out, but I never was skinny, even as a kid. <laughs> Okay, stop. Oh, so, yeah, Nicole Richie, and I like that she was like trashy, and you know, she, 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 you know, she partied. Put that lightly. She, she, she partied, and she fucking did some things, and I like that she was just like. There was a point where like I think she do she do like bleach on like a uh, pool table, and she was like acting all crazy, like love Nicole Richie, and I of course to this day still love Paris Hilton. So simple life. You can find that, I'm pretty sure, anywhere. And if you guys know where to find any of the shows, don't leave a direct link because that may mess me up. But like, just type, hey, guys, I found this show on, I don't know, Tubi. And then, you know, we can use common sense in our brains to like type in the words on Tubi. So if you guys like this video, 
as I said before, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. If you want to join the Trash Star family. Ooh, ooh, ooh. If you want to be a Trash Star and if you want more bimbo content, then yeah, you can follow me, honey. Don't forget to follow all my socials. I'll leave my TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and all that below. Don't forget to follow me. Yes, 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 yes. Hello. And leave in the comments below any bimbo television shows that you feel... I missed maybe for a part two and if you want to know about like bimbo rock star books that I feel you should read um yeah so leave that in the comments below I love you guys so much my trash stars I love you like I feel like I mess up that heart sometimes like no this looks better I love you my trash stars there's my kitty cat but yeah I love you guys and I will see you in the next video Mwah. bye